Okay, so let's uh, start with this course notes for factorization. This should be the first chapter that everybody learned in secondary four, if uh, because this this is the basically most important chapter for the for the year. Well, one of the most important chapter because we have like maybe three chapter that is quite important here. Uh, this chapter is basically used to simplify uh, algebraic expression okay so we have to um, make uh, really learn this well okay so we'll be using this in uh, later on the in the next chapters and also we'll be using this in secondary five also in a lot in CGEP so uh, if you take math in CGEP you'll be using this a lot okay this will be a really really uh, fundamental material that you have to really uh, learn so so you basically so let's start with this so uh, I'm not going to uh, say much more it's just remember you have to practice this a lot I would say teacher usually should be teaching this for a month to a month and a half just to make sure that everybody learned this well and have enough practice otherwise uh, you you you'll be having trouble later on if you don't practice this enough okay so practice a lot so for the common factor the first section is common factor put the common factor of all the terms in front of the expression so you have to find a, uh, a number that is can be divided by each term okay the, the same number for each term so the terms are actually separated by the plus or minus sign as we learned it in secondary two right so here uh, 2x squared plus 4x plus 6 all three terms can be divided by 2 so I will actually put the 2 in front okay and open a bracket because I'm extracting it in front right and also I have to extract a 2 here in front a 2 here in front so each term has to divide by 2 so if the first term divided by 2 it will, what is left the left is x squared plus if I divide it by 2 it will be 2x and then I 6 divided by 2 will be 3 so this is how I extracted the common factor okay so the common factor is basically the reverse of distribution right so if we have bracket like we do it in secondary 3 we distribute okay the the 2 into the bracket now we are actually taking it out from the racket okay so it's like the the reverse of what we have learned last year so next example what is common in these two terms because it's separate by the plus right there's two terms so two is common for both terms so both of them can divide by two okay so I'll, I'll say the letter the variable can be extracted as well right m to the power of four so you need to look for the lowest exponent okay which is four so i can extract m to the power of four and the lowest exponents here is n so i will just extract n so what is left on the first term i extracted the two the m4 and i extracted one of the n so what is left is one n only right because we if we multiply n times n it becomes n squared so what's left is really n now the second term what is extracted a 2 so what is left is a 5 right 2 times 5 will becomes ten, a 10 so that's why it's left with a 5 now m to the 6 we extracted m to the 4 so what is left is m to the 2 remember when we multiply the exponent adds up together so that's why we need to uh, subtract it so 6 subtract the 4 will be the 2 right so we have to do everything reverse now the n is extracted outside so it's no no more n so we can close the bracket now so this is my common factor 2m4 n okay so that's how are we going to do this some of you guys may, may have learned this already in sec3 some teacher teach this in sec3 so it might be a review for you but none uh, doesn't matter in in here we'll just we practice more because this is the first thing that we have to look for is a common factor for all terms so here if we have two terms here right I'll always look at the 
the most outside. So here I have one term, here I have two terms because it's separate by the plus, okay? Now, for this two term, what is the same thing? Actually, the bracket is the same. So I can extract the bracket, so which is a 4x plus 5, I extracted it. What is left here is 2x plus a 3, okay? What is left is 2x and plus 3. So that's what I, I, I did. I extracted the bracket outside, and that becomes something like this. Okay, and this is actually my answer. So I have shown you different scenario already for common factor. Now, factoring by grouping. Now this is, when we look at this is, um, for the common factor, we doesn't, doesn't matter how many terms you have to look at, but factoring by grouping, normally you have to look for at least um, four terms or more, okay? Group the terms and put the common factor of two or more groups in front. So let's say I group this and I group this, okay? So I'll put a bracket for each one of them. Okay, I have a plus here, so that's why I can just put a bracket, it doesn't matter. If I have a, a minus sign, then I have to change the sign inside the bracket. Now, I want to extract the common factor for each bracket. So if I look at 8x squared, what is the same thing here? It's basically 2x I can extract. So what is left is 4x plus 5. Remember, you can always verify. Just put back the 2x into the bracket as, uh, and, and then verify if it's the same thing as what we had before. So 2x times 4x is 8x squared. 2x times 5 is 10x. So that's the one way to verify if you extract it right. Okay. So at the beginning, you might want to verify that because you uh, we are not really used to do this. But then after a while, you you be get a hang on it, and then just you should be it should be fine, right? Here I can extract the three. What is left is four x plus a five. Okay. So once I did that, I still have two terms, right? I have this and I have that. And what is the do you, do we have the same thing on the both terms? Yes, we have the bracket that are the same. So we do it like the example before, I have to extract the 4x plus 5. And what is left is 2x plus 3. Okay, and this is how we do this. We, we call this grouping, uh, factoring by grouping. Okay. Now that was for four terms or more. So I'll show you the procedure on how to think uh, which technique we should use, okay? So we'll, we'll do that at the end when we learn all the techniques. Now product and sum here. The form of trinomial is like ax squared plus bx plus v. So we have to really look for this trinomial, meaning three terms, okay? Three terms, the first one is ax squared plus b, x, plus c. a, b, c can be any number. This method of factoring is to find two numbers which multiply together, gives the product a times c, and these two same. So I'll just do the example, it will be easier to understand. This technique only works for trinomial, which are capable of being factored. If it is possible that the two numbers do not exist, so this method, sometimes it doesn't work, so We'll, we'll see what kind of other technique that we can use to factorize if it if doesn't work, right? So let's look at this technique first. Now, I have three terms. First thing first, three terms, I can think of a product and sum. So what I have to do is, let me write down, because now this is just for this year, okay? If next year you are able to factor right away, you can just do it right away. Okay, it doesn't matter the, the step, but this year you have to really write down all the steps. So what is A, what is B, and what is C? Okay, this is the first thing that you should identify. Some, some teachers don't show this, but I think it's important for the beginning. Okay, so you should, you should do this. So I have this 8, 22, and 15. Now, I need to find a number that is M times N equals to 8 times 15. So a times C here, okay? This two, A times 15. 
which gives me what? A times 15, okay, is basically um, 120. Now I need to find the same two number m plus n equals to 22, which is from the b, right? So we have to really uh, look for a two numbers that multiply will give me 120. And the addition of the, the two will give me 22. Okay, so let's, so they must be really close together. So let, let's list. So if you don't know how to find the two number right away, okay, for sure you can do try trial and error, but then I would say it's easier to do it like organized. So I will list all the factor of 122, 120. Okay, so if we look for this, Let's do this. So I have uh, one times 20, that uh, one times 120, that will give me 120, right? And two times a 60, three times 40, four times 30, okay? Five times, um, if I divide by five, it will be 24. 6 times 20, uh, 7, I don't think it works, 8, uh, yeah, 8 times 15, basically, right? This, this is 8 times 15. And I have, what, 10 times 12. And I think that's pretty much it. So I list all the factor. And then you just need to figure out which one, when you add together, okay? When you add together, which one will give me 22? Well, for sure it's not this one. And this doesn't look like it, 62. This is 43. This is uh, 34, no. That's 29. Oh, well, it's getting closer. 26. And then 23. Oh, 22. There you go. So we have the two number. All right. So now that I found the two numbers, what do we do? we basically need to do it like factoring by grouping. So what do we need to do is we replace 22x here. So let's see, 8x squared plus 10x plus 12x plus 15. So I replace the 22x by 10x plus 12x because 10x plus 12x is basically 22x. So I just need to find these two numbers to separate it, okay? Once I separate it, I group them. Now again, this is a plus, so I can just put the bracket without changing any sign. You see what I mean when we get to something that we can, we need to change the sign. So I need to factor, do the common factor for each uh, bracket. So I have 2x here, 4x plus 5 plus 3, 4x plus 5. I now again, I need to do the factoring. Again, the 4x plus 5 is the same thing for both terms, so I need to extract it. So this is the factoring by grouping, right? So 2x plus 3, and this is my two factor for this trinomial, okay? So this is called the product and sum, okay? So we have the product and we have the sum. Okay, so this is very important here. Okay, just to make sure you need to always remember it's always ax squared plus bx plus c. Have to put this into this order before you identify what's your a, b, and c. Okay, just a side note. Okay, so that's a product and sum. Okay, we'll look at some uh, special techniques afterward with product and sum. But uh, in, in this case here, let's look at the next technique. Perfect square and difference of square. Perfect square is bit, also, I think this we have learned this last year. Some of you might learn learned it last year, but okay, doesn't matter. So we have to, we look at it here. Perfect square is basically a plus b and then square, so we have the two bracket. This is basically a plus b times a plus b, 
right? So we call this perfect square, okay? And then it will give me a square plus 2ab plus b square. So it's, a ident it's an identity that you can actually memorize, okay? Do you have to memorize this? No, but it will actually help you to do things quicker if you know it, okay? I wouldn't force people to learn the perfect square because this usually you, you want to save time and you don't want to do this because uh, unless you, uh, you you remember that oh the question is actually for sure is a perfect square then you apply this otherwise normally we don't verify okay but in this year i would suggest you to do that to verify if it's perfect square okay but in later years like secondary five or CJ, we normally we don't verify that but the difference of square this is important. You have to remember this. This must be a remember. Difference means subtraction of a square. So a subtraction of both a square. So a square minus b square. And this gives you a plus b times a minus b. So this is very important to remember. A difference of square gives you this. The same factor except the sign in the middle have changed. So this would be to memorize, okay? Let's look at the example, example 4a. So a plus b squared. So if we apply the, uh, the identities, we know that this is going to be uh, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Also, we can actually do this, okay? a plus b times a plus b. And then we do the distribution right like the the one that I don't know if your teacher ever show you this uh, looks like a moon okay so we draw this what there you go so this looks like a moon so this is the di distribution that we have learned in sec 3 so we can just calculate a times a a square and then a b plus a b plus b square and then the like term would be AB plus AB. So A squared plus 2AB plus a B squared. So you can basically do it this way to figure out the answer. But if you remember directly, you can just write the answer right away. Okay, it doesn't, you don't have to calculate. It will save you some time, but you know, I personally, I don't think it matters that much, but okay. So first, if we have numbers, what do we do? We have to identify what's A is two, B is five. So if we want to apply the identity A squared plus two AB plus B squared, we need to know what is A and B, right? So we just need to identify right at the beginning and then we just plug it in. Two squared is basically four, okay? Oh, I forgot the X. <laughs> okay, I forgot the X here. Oh, here we don't have the X, but that means here, I'll put it, my a is 2x, my b is 5. So a square is basically 4x square. Okay, 4x square because it's 2x square. Okay, so become 4x square plus 2 times uh, 2x times 5 plus 5 a square. So we have a 4x square plus 2 times 2, 4, 4 times 5, 20, 20x 20 plus a 25. So this is how we apply the identities, okay? Again, okay, some people find it, well, why don't we just multiply it, okay? We can do that too, right? We draw the moon, okay? And then 2x times 2x is a 4x squared, 2x times 5 is 10x, and then we have 10x again, and then we have a 25. And this is going to be 4x squared plus 20x because those are like, like terms, plus 25. So I think this is actually as fast as the other one with the identities at the beginning. So, so that's why I don't force usually my student to, do, to learn this by heart, but we need to learn this because it's part of the material in secondary four. So might as well do it this year. Next year, you don't have to, but the difference of square would be different. Now here, we have to factorize now. Before it was just multiplying, right? Now we need to factorize and figure out what's A, what is B. So first, if 
my a equals to 2x, my b equals to 5, then 2x times 5, then 2ab, is it really 20x? This is the question mark. So 2 times 2x times 5, this is actually 20x. So this is right. That means what? That means, okay, we, we basically to find a, we just try to use square root of this and square root of that to find uh, the a and b. So once we find a and b, we actually test the 2ab to see if it's equal to the middle term. If it's true, then we just need to write down, okay, it's 2x plus, because that's the plus that we are looking for, 5 squared. Okay, this is how we factorize with the identities. Okay. Otherwise, okay, if we don't want to use this identity, what can we do is a trinomial here, right? We use product and sum. Okay. If we use product and sum, for sure it's much longer, but for sure we are able to factorize in this case. Okay. You can test it out with product and sum using the same technique. I would encourage you to try to do that using product and sum and factorize this trinomial to see if it gives you 2x plus 5 times 2x plus, plus 5. Okay, then it should give you the same answer. Okay, but here it's just, I want you to, sh to show you how to use the identities. So, um, so the first thing again, square root on the first and the last term to find out what is your a and b and test 2ab to see if it's the middle term. If that's the case, you just need to write it out. a plus b is square, right? Plus is because this is a plus, then a is 2x, b is 5, okay? Now, subtraction. This is the same thing. a square minus 2ab plus a b square, okay? That's the identity. Again, you can distribute to find out if it's the same thing, but it should be, okay? I'm not going to do the same thing again because this the difference is just a minus in the middle, okay? So what is changed here is, is the sign here, okay? Now let's look at the next example here. Uh, example for E here. So I'm going to do it again uh, the two ways. The first, I will use the um, identity to show you. So I have my a as 2x, a b as 5. Okay. So the identity is basically going to be a squared plus 2ab. Oop, it's no longer plus because it's a subtraction. So minus 2ab plus b squared. Okay. So I have a square must be 4x square minus 2 times 2x times 5 plus 5 square. So I have a 4x square minus 20x plus 25. Okay. So the other way is to multiply, right? So I have my, my moon here. Uh, so 4x square. Uh, times minus 10x minus 10x plus 25. So minus 10 minus 10 is minus 20 because they are like terms, so I need to group them. And I get my answer. That's the same thing. So you decide which way you want to do it. So now, if I have a trinomial, normally this year, the first thing that you need to check is what is my A, what is my B, then to verify 2ab, right? So this is my a square, and this is my b square. So my a is going to be the square root of a yeah, 4x square, which is 2x. b the, is the square root of 25, which is 5. So if I put 22, sorry, 2x minus 5, why is it minus? Because the sign here is minus, okay? So is this correct? That's what I want to see. So 2 times a times b is going to be 2 times 2x times 5, which is 20x. So, and this is actually 20x, right? So the sign doesn't matter for, for now because 
when I do the perfect square, I have to put this sign there. So as long as the number is correct, and this is the perfect square. So I just need to follow that sign. So this is 2x minus 5 squared. Okay. Again, you can use product and sum. Okay. So this is not a problem. I will encourage you to do the same thing. You're trying to product and sum. Now, next one here is the difference of square. If you remember, difference of square is going to be a square minus b square. Okay. So this is basically the different sign for the factor here. Both factor is a and b, but then the sign in the middle is different. So this is called the, the difference of square. Okay. We can basically multiply it to c. So a square, right? So we have to do the moon here. a times a is a square. And then a times minus b is minus ab. And then b times a is plus ab. And then I have minus b squared. Plus ab minus ab, they cancel out. So what I have left is a squared minus b squared, which is the identities. Okay. Now here, again, since I know this is uh, difference of square because the sign here is different and all the other things are the same. So I can identify my a as 2x and my b as a 5. So a square minus b square is going to be 4x square minus 25. And this is my difference of square. Okay, so you don't have to multiply this and directly apply uh, a square minus b square. Again, you can also distribute to multiply this two factor and get to the same answer, right? But that way is longer. So this one is much faster when you recognize it right away. You can see that is 4x squared minus 25. So if you get 4x squared minus 25, how are you going to factor that? Well, all you need to know is, okay, here I can do a square root for the first term, right? And the second term I can do a square root. In the middle is a negative. So if in the middle is negative, it's a difference of two square. So I can say that this is my a, which is two x, and this is my b, which is five. Or square root of twenty five is five. Square root of four x squared is two x. And all I need to do is okay. So this is two x plus five and times two x minus five. If I want to factorize this, because I recognize it's difference of square. All I need to do is change the sign in the middle. Okay, this is how are you going to factorize difference of square? This is very important because you need to know to recognize when to see difference of square. It's always two terms, and there's a minus sign in the middle. Now, the next section is trial and error. Okay. This method is often used to factor trinomial faster compared to product and sum, but it takes a lot of practice. If you get to practice so much that this should be much faster than product and sum. And this actually is the way that uh, a lot of teachers in CJAP, they use this so that uh, so so when they use it, you have to recognize oh they are using this so that is why that's why the teacher is doing it so fast and actually some students from some uh, private school would actually teach you this way and it would be much faster so all i need to do is let's look at this so i need to look at the factor of 8 and the factor of 15 okay and then what I need to do is, okay, I'll, I'll just do some example here. I have, like, let's say factor is 1 and 8, factor of 8, right? And how about 15? 15 and 1, okay? So let's say I do this. I need to cross multiply and add the answer, add both answers. So let's say 1 times 1 plus 8 times 15. What does it give you? Okay, 8 times 15 here is 120. 120 plus 1 is 121. This is not 22. So this is not right. Okay, so this is not right. So what can I do? I can actually flip them, right? 1, 8 and actually 1, 15. 
and then I multiply this to C. Okay, so this is from here. So uh, 1 times 15 plus 8 times 1, this is going to give me 23. Well, this is not 22, right? So it doesn't work. So let's try again. Well, I know there's a lot of try and error, right? But once you get used to it, you know which number to try. Okay, so this is very important to uh, actually understand, right? You need to practice a lot so that you can actually become really good at this and become much faster. Or just like uh, uh, mental calculations, right? So uh, it's like when you learn the multiplication table by heart, then all the multiplication becomes much faster and easier. Now this, you just need to practice a lot so that your, your ca calculation will be uh, much faster. Okay, so there's a lot of mental math here, right? So you need to do a little multiplication and addition so to get 23. You, you never really need to write these down. All these are, you can do that in your head, right? So uh, you cross multiply and you add them to see if, oh, is it 22? No, it's not. So, and you just move on, right? So let's see. If I have uh, two and four, right? Those are the factor of eight. How about 15? I can still leave 1 and 15 here. Okay, so I have uh, 2 times 15 plus 1 times 4, which is going to give me 34. So that doesn't work. How about I switch it, right? If I switch it, 2, 4, and 15, and 1. So I don't think this works either because it's 4 times 15 is much bigger than 22 already. So that's 60, right? So that's 62, so that doesn't work either. Okay, well, is, do we have other factor of 1 and 15? So let's try that. So if I have 2 and 4, I can have 3 and 5. Okay. So what does it give me? Uh, 2 times 5 plus 3 times 4. I have 10 and... 12, so I, oh, actually I get to, uh, I get to uh, 22, right? So this is 22. Okay, so this works, right? So if this works, so what I need to do now is to put some X here. And since all these are positive, so I'll just put an add. So I have my two factor now, I have two X plus three and 4x plus 5, okay? So this is how I factor this with trial and error, okay? So uh, let me just write this nicer. Okay, so this is how I factor this with trial and error. So you can actually, I think I did the same example here with uh, product and sum, so you can compare both of them, right? So let's look at the next one. I'll do both here. I'll do trial and error and product and sum so that you can compare a little bit on the same question. Okay, so let's do trial and error first, okay? Now, eight and minus 15. So again, I can use two, three, oh, two, four, sorry. Two, four, and um, since it's minus 15, I will have minus three and five. So does this work? So two times five, okay, let me write it here. Two times five plus minus three times four, this is going to be minus 12 plus 10, so I have actually a minus two. Oh, if I get this number, it's actually the same, but the sign is different. What I need to do is just change the sign of one of them. So instead of minus three, I'll just put minus five. Okay, so I have 2, 4, 3, and minus 5. This is going to work, it should be, 2 times minus 5 plus 3 times 4 is going to be giving me a positive 2. Okay, so it's a plus 2. So this works, so I, all I need to do now is put some x on it. And this is add, and this is subtraction. So I have 2x plus 3 and 4x minus 5. And these are my two factor. Okay, so this seems fairly easy with, um, okay, well, 
Okay, so this seems very easy, right? Now, if I do it with product and sum, what does it look like? Okay, again, I should write down what is A, what is B, and what is C. My A is actually 8, right? So if I look at this, uh, B is actually plus 2, C is minus 15. Okay, if you look at the question here, okay, right? So I have that. I need to find m times n equals to 8 times minus 15, which is minus 120. m plus n must be equals to 2. Okay, so the two numbers must be really similar, and the one of them must be negative here, right? So what I need to do is list out some factor. Now, I'm not going to list all of them. I'll show you how to approach this, okay? Now, the factor of minus 1, 120 is, let's say, 1 times minus 120. This is going to give me, if I add them, this is going to give me um, minus uh, 119. So this is way too far. So let's jump ahead. Let's go to 6. You know, 6 times uh, minus 20. Okay, 6 times minus 20. So let's add them. This will give me minus 14. Oh, this is getting closer now. So I, they should be, again, closer. This two num the two numbers must be getting closer to each other so that the difference must be small. So let's say 10 times minus 12. So let's add them. 10 times minus 12 is minus 120. So 10 plus minus 12 is going to be minus 2. Oh. I get different signs, so I just need to change the sign on the number. So I have minus 10 plus 12, because minus 10 times 12 is going to give me minus 120, but minus 10 plus 12 is going to give me positive 2. Okay, so these are the two numbers. So what I need to do is uh, I'll just replace the plus 2x becomes minus 10x and plus 12x. So I have 8x squared minus 10x plus 12x and minus 15. Now I just need to group them. Since this is a plus, I can just put a bracket. Now I'll factor, uh, extract the common factor for each bracket, which is 2x here, and then 4x minus 5. And then here I'll extract the, the 3 and I'll still have 4x minus 5. And I have the same bracket, so I'll just, again, do a common factor. 4x minus 5, and then I have 2x plus 3. Now, this is actually the same answer as what I, I found before with trial and error. So you choose which method you want to use. The product and sum is a must learn for secondary four. Trial and error depends on the teacher, okay? And this, I would say, trial and error is actually simpler for later on for secondary five or CJEP. Okay, so product and sum. This is a longer way to do it. I found it. Okay, because if you practice enough for the trial and error, it's much faster. Okay, but you will have to use product and sum on the final exam. For the government exam, you will have to use the trial, uh, the uh, product and sum. Okay, because you need to show all your steps. Okay, trial and error, you don't have any step. It's just try and error for the numbers, right? So there's no step to correct. So that's why the uh, teacher and government want us to use the product and sum so that they can actually have the step to, to see if you go through this, the, the step correctly so that they can give you points, right? Section six here, completing the square, okay? This is actually the last technique that I'm going to show you on factoring, okay? Once you learn this and then you basically know all the, the way to factor, okay? This is when you don't, you, you can use the other two techniques, the trial and error or the product and sum. But in this, this first example, I'm, I'm going to show you um, all the three different ways because this example can be worked with a trial and error or product and sum or Completing the square. So completing the square works for everything. It's just the steps are so long that you don't want to use that. Okay, but 
in case when you cannot use the other two, then you will have to be uh, using completing the square. So let's do the first technique, trial and error. Okay, so trial, oops, error. Okay, then I'll have to look at what is the factor of one, which is one and one. The factor of the other one is also one and one. Since there's a negative in the middle, okay, so here I, when I add, multiply and add the both of them, it's going to be two, right? One times one plus one times one is two. But I have minus two. What I need to do is I just need to put a negative here. One times minus one is minus one plus minus one, which is minus two, okay? Well, this is going to be my answer, okay? I have um, x minus one times x minus one, which is x minus one square. This is actually a perfect square, okay? You can actually verify this with, with the identities also, okay? But I'm not, not going to use the identity just, just to see that, okay, if I don't even check the identity, I can use trial and error, right? And the second method is product and sum, okay? Product and sum, I will have to identify my A, B, and C. A is one, B is minus two, C is also one. So M times N equals to one, M plus N equals to minus two. Okay, what I need to find is the two factor, well, there's not much factor for one, right? It's just one and one, or minus one, minus one. So I have minus one times minus one equals to one, but minus one plus minus one is going to be minus two. So my two number is actually minus one and minus one. I'm going to actually show you a simpler way, but I'll, I'll just do it first. Okay, I'll, I'll do this first. X squared minus X, so minus one X minus one X plus one. So I replace the minus two X with minus one X and minus one X. So I group them, okay? Now this is a negative. What I will need to do is change the sign here to be a negative, right? Okay, so when I put the bracket, because the negative, the negative is outside, so I have to change the negative, uh, or the sign inside the bracket as well. Now I need to find the common factor for each bracket. So I have x, x minus one, and then this one is already x minus one. So I have to factor the bracket, which is x minus one. What is left here for the first term is x, the other term, what is left is actually minus one, okay? There's a one here that we don't see, but it's there, okay? So the answer is x minus one, x minus one, which is x minus one squared. Now, just to tell you, a side note for the product and sum, this is actually a, a, a extra techniques. When we see the coefficient of the first term x squared, which is one, the answer that we found for m and n, minus one and minus one, these are already my answer. So I can actually right away, write down that the answer is x minus one, x minus one, okay? Because it's minus one, so I'll just put it here, and this is right there, okay? So this is the easy technique when we see the coefficient when we see the a is equals to one, then the answer can be right away seen after we found the two uh, numbers, which is m and m. So I have, this is going to be x minus one square. Okay, so now this is actually product and sum. Okay, so you don't have to always do the uh, factoring by grouping. You can right away write the answer when a equals to one. Now I'm going to show you the completing the square. I'm going to do it on the side because it, it will take me uh, a little bit more space. You can do it uh, at the bottom. So uh, let's see. So I, I know my A is going to be one B equals to minus two C equals to one, right? So uh, I'm going to rewrite this first. A equals to one, B equals to minus two, C equals to one. 
Now, I'll have to insert the equation here, b over 2 squared minus b over 2 squared. So if I add something, subtract something, the same thing, they basically cancel, right? So I'm allowed to input this here, okay? So this doesn't change any value from this uh, expression, right? So that's why I am allowed to do this, add and subtract the same number. Now, if I add this into it, replace b by minus 2, what does it give you? Minus 2 over 2 here, square plus 1. Now, minus 2 over 2 is going to give me positive positive one because that's a square so this will give me one and this also give me one so i have plus or minus one so i have x square minus two x plus one minus one plus one now the first three terms okay this three terms i have a i have a perfect square that's why we call this completing the square because I, we want to complete it to make it into square, perfect square. So this is going to be, all I need to do is x we put, uh, taking uh, without the square. So this is x and subtraction, put it here, and the square root of this one, which is one. So I can basically without uh, doing the square, I can just take the uh, number inside, but always positive though, because when we do a square, it's always positive. So I can put this and then make it square. Now, plus one, minus one plus one, they cancel out. The answer is x minus one square. Okay, so this is my answer. So when we input the b over two square and B over minus b over two square. This will actually lead me to a perfect square. Okay, we'll, we'll do the other example. Okay, so don't worry about the techniques for now, but just to understand, all you need to do is input that and make it perfect square. Okay, so the next example, uh, we we have done this um, example before using a product in sum. So I'm going to show you how to use completing the square to factorize this. Just to let you know, completing the square is probably an optional uh, material. For the government, they, they, are, they are not going to test you on the final exam on the um, completing the square. So uh, this might be just for the teacher to decide if they are going to teach you this or not. Okay, So you can actually, if your teacher is not going to show you this, you can leave this for next year. But for sure, this is for the next year subject, okay? Secondary five, uh, you have to use uh, in one or two chapters for the computing the square. So it's still important, okay? Um, the thing is, if the teacher show you next year, though they might not have, you might not be have a, as much time as this year to learn well on completing the square. So you'll be learning another subject. On top of that, you need to know this. But I, I feel personally, I feel this is part of the uh, factorization chapter. So we should be doing this in secondary four, truly. Okay. And so anyhow, so if you don't need to learn this, you can leave this part for next year. But okay, I will suggest you to actually learn it this year so that you know all the techniques that you need, okay? So first, what is A, B, and C? A is eight, B is 22, and C is 15, okay? Now, is this right for completing the square? I would say, I will have to factor out, what is important for the completing the square is, the coefficient of x squared must be one. So what can I do here? Okay, what I need to do is do a factoring, a common factor for eight. Even though it's not really common, I need to do this: twenty-two over eight x plus uh, fifteen over eight. 
Now, is this right? Okay, to, uh, I'm going to simplify this a little because x squared plus 11 over 4x plus 15 over 8. Okay, so I simplify the 22 over 8. Now, this works fine now because I have the coefficient of x squared to be 1. This is very important for completing the square. So I will have to rewrite a is 1, b is 11 over 4, c is 15 over 8. So I will leave the 8 in the front, okay? It's always going to be in front, but I will be working inside the bracket. So I have x squared plus 11 over 4x plus a b over 2 squared minus a b over 2 square and then plus 15 over 8. At this point you'll be wondering like this is much more complicated than product and sum why are we doing this? You'll be seeing this why in the next example but in this one just bear with me. Okay I know it's, it looks complicated with all the fraction but I just want to show you it will give you the same answer. Okay so I have 8 x squared plus now my b is 11 over 4, right? So I'm going to have something like this. 11 over 4 over 2 square mi minus, sorry, uh, 11 over 4 over 2 square plus a 15 over 8. Okay. Now the next one, I'm going to uh, make the fraction nicer because a fraction over a fraction is not really allowed so I'm, I'm going to do it this way 11 over 8 okay square minus 11 over 8 square plus 15 over 8 so if I simplify this into a fraction it will be 11 over 8 now the next one so I just need to group this into a perfect square right so I'll take the x here and take the 11 over 8. So I don't need to square it. I just need to take the 11 over 8. And the plus sign is actually from here. So I have 11 over 8. And I group this as a perfect square. This is how, I, how are we going to do this all the time, okay? Remember this. Take the x without the square. Take the 11 over 8 without the square. And then put a sign in the middle, okay? And put the bracket and put a square in it. So that's a perfect square. Subtract. So 11 over 8 square now, I have to really square it. 11 square, which is 121 over 64 plus F15 over 8. Now I have to group these two terms here because they are like terms. Okay, so I don't think I will have enough space. So I'll try to write a little smaller. So 8 here, x plus 11 over 8 square minus 121 over 64 plus 120 over 64 so I need to put them in the common denominator first so I think I forgot the, to close the bracket here and then I need to calculate this right minus 121 plus 120 that is basically minus 1 over 64 so I have 8 x plus 11 over 8 square minus 1 over 64. Now at this point you'll be asking oh inside the bracket the big bracket I have two terms and there's a minus sign in the front that's a difference of a square right that's difference of square so a plus b a minus b equals to a square minus b square right so I will have to do the difference of square 8 so I'll have, now a is going to be x plus 11 over 8. So x plus 11 over 8 plus the square root of 1 over 64, which is 1 over 8. All right. So that's my first bracket. The second bracket is a, x, sorry, x plus 11 over 8 minus 1 over 8. Okay. So my a is going to, here is actually x plus 11 over 8. My b is actually 1 over 8. Okay, so I always square root of 1 over 64 is 1 over 8. The square root of the first term, which 
with the, the with the square they cancel out so it's just x plus 11 over 8. So this is basically my a and b if you you have a hard time following and I just plug it into the formula to get to what I have in red here. Now that I have this, what can I do? Okay, I can actually simplify first. So I have eight x, this is going to be 12 over eight, and this is going to be uh, 10 over eight. So let me simplify this. So I have x plus three over two, and then x plus five over four. From here, my eight, okay, my eight is actually two times four, right? So I can actually separate this into two times four. So why, why am I going to do this? Because I want to make it exactly the same answer as in the previous example that I have shown you. Two times four times x plus a three over two times x plus a five over four. I'll just put the two in the first bracket distribute in the first bracket and the four distribute in the second bracket okay because this is all multiply so I can just put one into one bracket okay we don't need to put in both bracket because they are all multiplication okay it's very you have to be very careful if there's a plus or minus you distribute into the same bracket then you have to give it to all terms, but if it's all multiply into brackets, right? This is multiply, this is in, in the middle is also multiply. Then you just need to, you can actually choose one bracket to multiply. So what, what it gives is if two multiply the first bracket, it will give me two X plus a three. The four multiply into the second bracket is four X plus five. And this is actually my factors. So I just factorize uh, this trinomial using completing the square. Well, this is hell, right? This is hell. Why do we do this? Well, if you are able to use product sum or try and error, use those, right? And then instead of doing all this step to get to the same answer, right? Now the next, next one, you'll be seeing why we need to use completing the square here. So let's look at the this example. So if we do trial and error here, okay, this is going to be one, one, one and three. There's no other factors. I can actually change the, the position. So this is one uh, times three, which is three plus one is going to be four. So I don't think it will give me two here. So if I do product and sum, m times n equals to uh, actually one times three, which is three and m plus n must be giving me two. So what are the factor of three? It's one and three. One and three will never give me two. So how, so how am I going to prove that this is not uh, able to factorize? Hmm. So I have actually my a is one, b is two, three, uh, uh, sorry, c is three. A is equal to one, so I'm able to do completing the square. So let's look at that. X squared plus two X plus B over two square minus B over two square, and then plus three. I have X squared plus two X plus two over two square minus two over two square plus three. Two over two is basically one, right? So this is just one and one square. So I can do my perfect square right away. X plus, again, this plus here is going to be this plus, and then plus one because it's two over two. And this is a square here. And subtract one square plus three. One square is just one plus three. So minus one plus three is going to be plus two. Okay, so I have X plus one square plus two. Well, this is not a difference of a square because there's a plus in the middle. So I'm no longer to do able to do anything here. So I'm not going to be able to factorize. So the answer is not factorizable. So not able to factorize. Okay. So if I want to factorize this, not able to. Okay. 
So because of this plus here, I can see it's not a difference of squares and I cannot continue. If I cannot continue, I'm not able to factorize. Now, again, this example is going to show me why I need completing the square as well. First, I can do try and error. 1, 1, and let's say minus 2 and 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. 2 plus minus 2 is actually 0. So it doesn't work. It's not plus 2. Uh, how about 1, 1, minus 4, and 4, 1. 1 times 1 is 1 plus minus 4, so minus 3. So it's not going to be plus 2, right? So this is going to be not able to do that. So I'll, I'll do the completing the square the square right away so that you can see why I need to do that. I'm not going to try the product and sum here. So I have a, b, c, 1, 2, and minus 4. Okay, so a is equal to 1, so I can start doing completing the square. So x squared plus 2x plus b over 2. So for the first year, you should always write the first line here, plus b over 2 square and minus b over 2 square. Uh, this is very important for the step. x squared now, I replace b by 2. So I have 2 over 2, which is uh, 1 square minus 1 square minus 4. Okay, b is 2, so 2 over 2 is 1. So I just need, I don't need to write the fraction. I can directly write that is 1. So I'll do the completing uh, the square here, the perfect square. x plus, again, this is plus 1 square. And minus 1, minus 4, minus 5. Okay, so if I have minus 5, well, in the middle is a negative, but 5 is not able to do square roots because it will give me decimal. So what I need to do is, well, my A, so I'll use another color here. So if I want to do difference of square, my A is going to be x plus 1 my b is going to be square root of 5, okay? I don't need to write the decimal here. I can just put square root of 5, okay? You are going to realize that in secondary 5 or in CJEP, for sure in CJEP, we can leave answer with a square root. We don't have to type into the calculator and give decimal. Because sometimes the teacher doesn't even want us to use calculator. So we can leave the answer as square root of 5. That's why Completing the square is going to give me a factor with square root in it. Okay, so you see what I mean. So if I use the identity a square minus b square, so I'll I'll have my a as x plus one, and then plus a square root of five, right? So this is a plus b. Now I need to do a minus b, right? So which is x plus one minus square root of five. Okay, right? This is A, this is B. So I have a plus and the other one is minus, right? So this is the difference of square when I need to factorize. Now, uh, so actually this is actually my, my final answer. So X plus one plus a square root of five, I cannot do anything more. I cannot simplify anything or merge any like terms because this one plus square root of five, I will just leave it like that because I want the exact number. If I put it in decimal, it will not be exact. So this is my exact answer on how to factorize this using completing the square. So you're not going to be able to find this factor using trial and error or product and sum. The only way is to use completing the square. So that's why this is useful. Now. Sec next, next section is the, the logic that I want to show you how to factorize. The first thing, always look for common factor. Factor it out. And then the second question is, or well, second step is to ask yourself, how many terms do we have? If we have only two terms, think of difference of square. It's, if it's not a negative in between, then most of the time, we are no longer it's, it's no, we can no longer factorize. The, the expression, okay? So it must be a difference of square if it's two term. If it's three terms, so you can think of product and sum, trial and error, or completing the square. 
Now, if it's four terms or more, you need to either use factoring by grouping or regroup the term and look at each group to see if any of them can be factorized by asking how many terms. Again, you have to go back to, go back to, oops, sorry. There you go. Go back to how many terms. Then once you regroup the terms, so let's say you have five, six, or seven terms, then regroup them, okay, with brackets and ask how many terms do you have in each bracket? Oh, three terms. So let's try product and sum for each bracket. Okay, or two terms, is this a difference of square? Or four terms and more, and then just group again, right? So you have to do this recursively, okay, if you have much more terms. But most of the time in secondary four, we'll be focusing on two terms and three terms. If it's four terms or more, most of the time is factoring by grouping, okay? So these are the steps that you need to go through. So for the next section here, we will be uh, simplifying with factorization. Okay, but first we need to learn what is restriction. Restriction is for the division, we cannot divide by zero. Divisor cannot be equal to zero, right? The denominator cannot be equal to zero. So we must have put a restriction to show domain of the variable. To find the restriction, we put the divisor, the denominator equal to zero, and then find the value of the variable. I'll show you the example here. So to understand the restriction, uh, first of all, I'll, I'll just show you uh, something like this. So we are not allowed to have a division by zero, right? So let's say uh, eight over zero, this is basically not possible. So if I have one over, uh, one over x plus one, so what I need to do is x plus one equal to zero, x, well, cannot be equal to zero, right? not equal to zero. So x not equal to minus one. So I just do it like the normal way to solve for x, except that instead of equal, it's now not equal. So this is actually my restriction. So if I have something like this, nine x squared plus six x, well, how, how am I supposed to find something like this easier? Well, we need to factorize, right? So the first things first, we need to factorize this. So I have, so the numerator, we don't need to uh, touch it. The denominator, I need to actually factor it out. So I factor three x out and three x plus two, that's what is left, right? So that's the common factor. Now I have two factor here. So I have factor three x and the other factor is three x plus two. So I'll have two answer, okay? So I'll first take each factor, make it not equal to zero, okay? and x is not equal to zero. So that's actually my first one. Now the second one is three x plus two not equal to zero and I have three x, sorry, three x not equal to minus two and x not equal to minus two over three. So these are two my two restrictions. So restriction, I have x not equal to zero and x not equal to minus Two third. Okay, so these are the two uh, restrictions that I have for this question. Okay, so it's very important to actually uh, find these because you need to know what is the domain of the functions, right? So this is the way to find the domain, and actually this is to tell uh, other people that oh x cannot be these two value, and sometimes we can use this to figure out the answer is correct or not. Okay. Now the next example here, again, I will have to factorize. But before I factorize, I see that, oh, this is a trinomial. If it's a trinomial, I'll have to use product and sum, okay? So I have A uh, is two, B is minus five, C is minus three. So that's from the denominator, right? So M times N equals to minus six, which is, two times minus three, right? So minus six, m plus n must be equal to f minus five. So what are the numbers that I need to use to make it uh, like this? So I can actually have one times minus six. 
So one plus minus six is actually minus five. So one and minus six are the correct number, right? So I, I just need to um, do the uh, factoring by groups now. So I have two X square. Um, I'll use, let's say, uh, plus one minus six X, no, plus one X, right? Sorry, I, I forgot the X minus six X and minus three. So I'll have to group them. Now I'm grouping this and there's a negative in front. So I have to change the sign inside. So I will have, now let's do the common factor. I'll take out the X. I have two X plus one. I'll take out the three, two X plus one. So this will be two X plus one and then x minus three. So I'll factor out the, the common bracket in front and then what is left is x minus three. So this is how I factor. Once I factor this, I'll make each factor not equal to zero. So I have two x plus one not equal to zero. So I have two x not equal to minus one, x not equal to minus one half. And the other one is x minus three not equal to zero, x not equal to three. So the restriction here is going to, oh, this looks like rest, but restrictions, x not equals to minus one half, x not equals to three. So these are, this is how I use a factorization to find out my restriction here. Simplifying with a rational fraction. So how am I going to simplify now? Now for sure, every time we see a division, we need to write down the restriction, okay? Um, but I'll have to simplify, so I have to factor out anyway. So first things first, I will have to factor out the numerator as well. If we look at this, this is basically a difference of square. Okay, so I have a subtraction, I have two terms, I have a subtraction in between. I know the square root of x squared, which is x, the square root of nine is three. So this must be a difference of square. So this is going to be x plus three and x minus three. Okay, so basically my a is x, my b is three. So this is how I factor out the difference of square. Now, if you multiply these two brackets, it will give you x squared minus nine. So please look at the identity from the section before that I, I show you. Uh, you. You can you need to practice more if you don't recognize this, right? So uh, the next one is x squared plus six x plus nine. This is trinomial. So you can use either product or sum or try and error. So here I can, I'll, I'll just stick with product and sum because you, you guys will have to use this on the exam. But on the side, you can actually practice trial and error or completing the square. So the coefficient of x squared is one. So once I found the two numbers, those will be my answer right away. So again, a equals to one, b equal to six, c equals to nine. I'll have m times n equals to one times nine, which is nine, m plus n equal to six. I'll have three and three. So three times three, right? which is nine and three plus three is six. So I will have X plus three and X plus three because both number will be three. So I'll have plus three and plus three. Now that I have factorized this, I'll have to find, once I finish factorizing, I'll find the restriction. The restriction is saying that denominator, each factor make it not equal to zero. So restriction, x, uh, well, I'll do it here on the side, x plus three, not equal to zero, x not equal to minus three. For both, because both brackets are the same, so I'll only have one restriction, x not equals to minus three, there you go. So if I simplify now, so once I found the restriction, I can simplify, right? So x plus three and x plus three cancel out, so what is left is x minus three over x plus three with x that is not equal to minus three. And this is my answer. Okay, so 
the multiplication and division of a rational fraction. So we need to uh, basically look at each uh, component, so each uh, de numerator and denominator, to see if we can factorize them. Okay, because we want to simplify it. Okay, before we multiply, we always want to simplify, just like fraction. We want to simplify, and then we multiply. Right. So in this case, we need to simplify. If we want to simplify, we use factorization. So first of all, on the first uh, fraction here, I I see that I have a trinomial. So I will need to use product and sum. Okay, product and sum. That would be. Uh, so if I use, I'm looking at this one, then my a is 2, b is minus 3, c is minus 2. Then my product and sum number will be m times n must be equal to 2 times minus 2, which is minus 4, m plus n must be equal to minus 3. So what I have here, it should be, the number should be like minus 4 times 1, right? Because if we add them, it will give me, minus 3. So I have the two numbers now. So what can I do here is 2x squared minus 4x plus x minus 2. Okay, so I I do, I, I replace the minus 3x by minus 4x and plus 1x. Now I need to group them. Since it's a plus, I don't need to change any sign. I need to factor out the common uh, factor. So that's x minus 2 plus x minus 2. And then I can actually factor out the x minus 2 because it's the same thing on both terms, x minus 2. And then what is left is 2x plus 1, okay? There's always a 1, okay? Don't forget about that. There's always a 1 in front of this bracket. Some students just ignored it and then it, we don't have the plus 1. So that's a common mistake, so don't do that, okay? So I have this factorized and the bottom one is actually a difference of square. So what I have here right now is going to be x minus 2, right, x minus 2, and then 2x plus 1, and the bottom will be x plus 1 and x minus 1, because that's the difference of square. Um, you just need to follow the, um, the identities. So I have x minus 1 over 2x plus 1. Now I just need to simplify. Okay, but before doing that, I need to write down all the restriction, okay? So all the restriction would be, all the denominator equal to zero. So how many factor do we have? I have one, two, and three. So I have three of them. X plus one not equal to zero. So X not equal to minus one. X minus one not equal to zero. So X not equal to one. Uh, 2x plus 1 not equal to 0, so 2x not equal to minus 1, x not equal to minus 1 half. So I have this free restriction. Now if I start simplifying here, I can actually cross out this diagonal. So when we simplify, it's always vertical or diagonal, okay? Never horizontal, okay? Remember that. So this and that. So what is left is just x minus 2 over x plus 1. So this is going to be x minus 2 over x plus 1. With x not equals 2, uh, I would do this in the uh, from the uh, increasing order. So minus 1, minus a half, and 1. Okay, so this is actually my final answer. Okay, if you forgot the restriction, most of the teacher will take off points, okay? So there's a few teacher, they don't really care at this point because they want you to know how to calculate before knowing, uh, writing down all the restriction. But most of the school, especially in Python school, you will have to uh, write down all the restriction. Otherwise, the points are off. Now, next one is actually the division now. So division, there's something special here. Okay, so, but first of all, we are going to look for the, uh, all the uh, factorization of each, uh, each part. So the first one, I'll just do a common factor. So let me do it here, 2x, it'll be x plus 1 on top of x plus 5. So divided by, right, divided by. So here I will factor out 2x, same thing as here, x, uh, it'll be, so if I look at this, it's 2x, 
x squared minus 1 and x squared minus 1 is actually the difference of square which is 2x and then x plus 1 and x minus 1 so I have x plus 1 x minus 1 divided by is a trinomial so I'll take a look on this x squared plus 10x plus 25 remember that a here is equal to 1 b is 10 c is 25 so whenever we found a number we don't have to do the factoring by grouping because so this is the special case here if a is 1 we can just write down the answer okay so let's look at this m times n equals to 1 times 25 and m plus n equals to uh, 10 so what i have here is actually 5 and 5 right 5 times 5 is 25 and 5 plus 5 is 10 so now I I will have x plus 5 and x plus 5 so both of them are 5 right so we can write down the answer directly because a equals to 1 okay so that's the special case when a equals to 1 we can write down the answer directly once I found the two numbers right it's 5 times 5 5 plus 5 so these are the two numbers so I have x plus 5 and x plus 5 now I need to write down the restriction now restriction for the division I need to write write down the from this denominator this denominator and the numerator because division is multiplying the inverse right so the top part will become denominator okay so that's why I will have to write x plus 5 not equal to 0 I have uh, or it will be the same thing on the right side the denominator so I will have 2x not equal to 0 and x plus 1 not equal to 0 and also x minus 1 not equal to 0 so I will have x not equals to uh, minus 5 x not equal to 0 x not equal to minus 1 x not equals to 1 so I have actually four uh, restriction now I'll have to flip that over So it become multiplication and then I can start uh, simpli simplifying uh, vertically and diagonally. So I have this cross out, 2x cross out, x plus 5 co cross out. What is left here is actually x plus 5 over x minus 1 with x that is not equals to uh, minus 5 minus 1 0 and 1 and that's my final answer again you you need to use uh, practice a lot to be able to uh, to do this well okay so it's very important you practice a lot more okay I would say even like practice over a hundred questions you know on factorization this is this is actually not exaggerating so okay so you need to practice really a lot okay so, so the next session is uh, addition and subtraction of rational fractions so basically add or subtract of a fraction we need to find a common denominator so that's the main point okay so I'll show you how to do that with uh, uh, ra uh, rational fractions here with the algebra okay so let's look at this the first one we have 3 over x and 8 over y so the common denominator is x times y okay so that's easy right because uh, this, this is the simplest way to do it multiply the two denominator and get the common denominator okay so I have this as uh, x and y plus x and y right so on top I will have to multiply by y so it will be 3 right the other one is multiplied by x so 8 x again you have to write down the uh, restriction afterward right so I'll, I'll have to do that after so well I can do it right here so restriction x not equal to 0 and y not equal to 0 here so the next step here is to put them together so I'll, I'll say uh, group them in the 
uh, alphabetical order so 8x plus a 3y over xy so I will have to put x in front of y right so that's the order with x not equal to 0 and y not equal to 0 okay so that would be my final answer so this example here I want to find a common denominator what is the common denominator here so it could be uh, 18 I would say 18 is the common denominator between 9 and 6 so we don't have to multiply 9 and 6 to get 54 18 is actually common number for both of them right so 2 times 9 is 18 6 times 3 is 18 so I can get to 18 okay what I have is I have 18 now the x I have to get the highest degree so x squared is the highest degree so I have to have x squared right so the other one is also 18 x squared so I have to get to 18 x squared how do I do that the top part here must well the bottom part I multiply with 2x 2x times 9x will give me 18 x squared so on top I will have to multiply with 2x here I will have to multiply with 3x Oh, without, without x, just the 3. 3 times 6x squared will give me 18x squared, right? So I just need to multiply with the 3. So if I put it here, 2x times 2x plus 3y, and then here is 3 times 2x minus 3y, so that's what I have, okay? Now, if we look at the denominator here, the common denominator I would say so 18 x squared cannot be equal to 0 right so x not equal to 0 so that's actually my restriction now the next step is to multiply into the bracket right so I have 4 x squared plus a 6 x y and then here I can actually put everything on the same fraction because we have now the common denominator plus 6x minus 9y so this is basically what I have the first bracket is 4x squared plus 6xy the second bracket here will be 6x minus 9y okay so can I simplify anything here I don't think so right so they, they are not like terms so I can just leave it like that because this is degree 2 this is also degree 2 so they will be staying in the front and 6x comes before minus y 9y because x comes before 9 uh, before y sorry so that's the the correct order with x not equals to 0 and this is actually my answer now the next question here we have not only the one terms we have a binomial at the denominator so how am I going to find the common denominator it actually is the same thing so we just multiply the two denominator okay so this is going to be x plus 5 x plus 2 on the first one subtract second one will be x plus 5 and x plus 2 so the first fraction I will have to multiply with x plus 2 right so I'll on top I will have to multiply also with x plus 2 and the other part here I have to multiply with x plus 5 right so I have x minus 5 times x plus 5 what can I recognize from here is x plus 2 x plus uh, x minus 2 x plus 2 this is difference of squares now you have to really kind of recognize this right so try to remember that so I get x squared minus 4 so actually I can put it on the same thing x plus 5 and x plus 2 and then subtract I can put the bracket right subtract this is also an other difference of square so x squared uh, minus 25 so that's actually my second difference of square so I have to multiply the negative into the bracket so I have to change the sign now at this case I can write down the restriction now right 
restrictions. So x plus 5 not equal to 0, x uh, plus 2 not equal to 0. So I have x not equal to minus 5, x not equal to minus 2. So if I continue here, I'll have x squared minus 4 minus x squared plus 25 over x plus 5, x plus 2. I'll get to x squared minus x squared. They cancel out, right? And then I have minus 4 plus 25, which is 21. 21 over x plus 5 and x plus 2 at the bottom. And then x is not equals to minus 5 and minus 2. When we enumerate, enumerate the, um, the value of uh, the restriction, we use the curly bracket. If it's, a, if it's an interval, then it's a square bracket that we are going to use, right? So curly bracket is to enumerate the values. So this is actually my final answer. So we'll, we'll be looking at those uh, uh, brackets more in detail when we talk about the properties, which we already done that in secondary three, but we'll be reviewing it in secondary four, right? Uh, because we need to learn some other functions. Anyway, for this here now, I'll have another uh, two fraction that I, I want to add, right? Then first things first, because I have two different denominators. So am I going to multiply way away? No, you have to factorize first. You always want to factorize when you see a trinomial, okay? Or even a common denominator, you, uh, common uh, factor, you should always factorize it out, okay? So it's, it's very important to factorize before you find the common denominator, okay? Because it will make your life simpler. So let's look at the trinomial. So a equals to one, so again, I can find the two number right away after I figure out m and n. b equals to minus two, c equals to one. So m plus oh, m times n must be equals to one. m plus n must be equal to minus two. Remember, this is a times c. Eh? m times n is a times c. Okay, it's always a times c. Remember that. Now. Let, let me think of it. So the minus one times minus one must be equal to one. Minus one plus minus one is going to be minus two. So these are my two numbers. So I have x minus one and x minus one. All right. So I'll replace that here. I have x minus one times x minus one. So that's actually a perfect square plus one over x minus one. Now the common denominator is actually x minus one squared. Okay, so the first one I already have the uh, denominator. So what I have here is going to be x minus one, x minus one. I'll, I'll just make it shorter because I still want to separate it so that I, you can see what I need to do. So x minus 1 and x minus 1. So the first one is actually the same. So it will be just 1. The second one I have to multiply with x minus 1 at the top and bottom to get to the same denominator. right? So I, I just need to add them now. So 1 plus x minus 1 over x minus 1, x minus 1. And this is going to be uh, 1 minus 1 is just x over x minus 1 square okay i'll just group them as a square and saying that x is not equals to or i didn't do the restriction here right so let me do the restriction x minus one not equal to zero x not equals to one and that's the only one because they are all x minus one right so x not equal to one there you go and these are all the cases that I want to show you for addition and subtraction. Okay, so the next section here is polynomial division. So we call this long division. So um, we'll be doing algebraic expression and with the long division. Okay, so 
Uh, if the division does not have remainder, there are two choices to do the division. Factorize and then simplify. Revert to simplifying rational fraction or long division. Okay, so let's see. Like, let's say this, we don't know, we don't want to factorize, we just want to do the long division. How are we going to do this? Because this is actually the same thing as uh, saying uh, 2x squared minus x minus 6 over 2 uh, 2x plus 3. So there's actually restriction here. So let's do that first. 2x plus 3 not equal to 0. So 2x not equal to minus 3. x not equal to minus 3 half. So that's actually my restriction. Now let's do the long division instead of factoring. Right? So I can show you that uh, we can still do long division without factorization. But normally we do factorization so that we can simplify. And you see, I'll, I'll tell you when we are able to do division or not. So there's actually a test for it. So let's, I'll do the division with the English system here. Uh, so that's the order that we put to do the division. So 2x plus 3 multiply with what to get, get uh, 2x squared here? 2x times actually x will give me 2x squared. And then x times 3 is going to give me 3x. So I need to subtract that, okay, so that this cancel out. Uh, minus x minus 3x, so that's actually minus 4x. I'll bring down the minus 6. So now I ask again, what number do I multiply to the 2x to give me minus 4x? So that would be minus 2. Okay, so x minus 2 here. So minus 2 times my, uh, 2x will give me minus 4x. Minus 2 times 3 is going to give me minus 6. So if I subtract that, the remainder is actually 0. So my answer for this is going to be x minus 2. Okay, so the answer is actually x minus 2. So the answer is x minus 2 with x not equal to minus 3 over 2. And this is actually my final answer. So this is how I, we do the long division. Let's do some more example. Okay, so next example here, uh, I'll, again, this is like a fraction, right? So uh, I'll have to write down the restriction. The restriction is actually the denominator, which is x minus two. So I'll do that right away. Restriction. I shouldn't be putting an S because it's just one of them. But anyhow, it doesn't matter. Most of the time we have more than one. So minus x minus two, uh, not equal to zero. So x not equals to two, right? So I'll have to write this here, three x squared minus two x plus one, and then x minus two. So that's the, the way that we do long division with the English system. Uh, so we ask ourselves, what number do we multiply with the x so that we get 3x squared? So that will be 3x. 3x times x is 3x squared. Now 3x times minus 2 is going to be minus 6x. Okay, and then we need to subtract that. If we subtract that, this is going to be minus 2x minus minus, so it becomes plus 6x, so it's 4x here. We bring down the plus 1, and then we ask again, what number do we multiply to the x so that we get 4x? So it's just 4, so plus 4. So plus 4 times x is 4x, plus 4 times minus 2 is actually minus 8. So we subtract, minus minus is a plus. So 4x cancel out, then minus minus 8 is plus 8, so 1 plus 8, which is 9. So we have a remainder here, okay? So what happened here is, we're going to write down the answer as 3x plus 4, remainder 9. Okay, so 3x plus 4, remainder 9, x not equals to 2. And that would be the complete answer for this question. Okay, so I guess you should review all these examples that I have done with you so that you are getting more... Uh, the hangs on the step on how to do this. Okay, so I again you can practice more, or we look at these videos uh, a few times so that you can get the hang on the uh, steps. So again, 
this is actually a special case because uh, if we look at the here the trinomial we don't have the term of x squared okay so what do we want is actually to replace it okay so let's first of all let's do the restriction so we'll, we'll start with that after restriction is x minus 1 not equal to 0 so x not equal to 1 and then we we write down what is inside the long division here I will have to add 0 x squared so that everything will be aligned afterward because you see what I mean okay so this is very important to add the one that is missing with a 0 okay so uh, x minus 1 here so what do I multiply with the x to get x cubed? So that would be x squared, okay? And then x squared times minus one will be minus x squared. Now, if I subtract that, it's going to give me uh, zero here, and then zero minus minus will become a positive. I bring down the minus two x. You see the zero x squared is important so that everything gets aligned, okay? So that's why you have to add the terms that is missing with a zero in front so that when you do the long division everything will align now what value do you multiply with the x to get x squared well x right so x squared here then plus x I get x squared and x times minus 1 will be minus x and then I have to subtract it okay so this one it will cancel minus 2x minus minus x will becomes a minus x I bring down the plus 1 and then now I have to multiply with minus 1. So minus 1 times x will be minus x, right? That's the, the point to get this cancel out. And then minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. So if I subtract this, I will have a remainder of 0. Now that I have the answer, I can put, put this down. The answer would be x squared plus x minus 1 with x not equals to 1 okay so this is the special case that I want to show you to add a term that is not existing with a 0 in front for the coefficient so that's for the long division now if we want to know if it's divisible if there's actually a remainder there's a way to do this but the divider should be in the form of 1x minus a so it's very important that you have 1x minus a so the coefficient of your x must be 1 to be able to use this trick okay now if we look at most of the time actually we we do have a 1 for the coefficient if we don't have that then well you just do the long division right if we do have that we can actually test it out to see okay now that I have 1 for the coefficient here okay if we look at the restriction it's actually x equals is x not equals to 2 but we want this to work so that we want this to be 0 so that x must be equal to 2 if x is 2 then this will be 0 right so I'll have to use x equal to 2 to replace into the x here okay so what what happened is 2 times 2 to the cube plus a 3 times 2 to the square minus 4 times 2 minus 1 and this is going to give me 2 times 8 plus a 3 times 4 minus 2 times uh, minus 4 times 2 minus 1 this is going to give me 16 plus 12 minus 8 minus 1 and this is going to be 19 okay so this is 19 what does it mean it means that the remainder is actually 19 okay so if you don't believe it let me do the long division to show you okay so we can do this 2x cubed plus 3x oops 3x squared minus 4x minus 1 long division x minus 2 we multiply with 2x squared here so that we get to 2x cubed 2x squared times minus 2 will be minus 4x squared and then we subtract this and then it will become minus minus is a plus so 7x squared minus 4x now time what times x will give me 7x squared plus 7x so I have 7x squared 7x times minus 2 will be minus 14x 
I subtract this now, it becomes a plus 14. So that would be 10x. I bring down the minus 1. What number do I multiply with the x to give me 10x? Well, plus 10, right? Okay, so I get 10x. 10 times minus 2 is minus 20. The answer is going to be 19 remainder. Oh, okay, so that is actually giving me the remainder. That's interesting. So, so I know that this is not divisible because there will be a remainder, right? So the next thing, well, I'm not going to find the restriction here because uh, the whole point of this section is to show you how to see if it's uh, divisible or not, right? So the next one here is going to be, if I have x minus one, that means I want x equals to one. Okay, if I put x equals to one in this, so I have two times one to the cube plus three times one to the square minus four times one uh, minus one. This is going to give me two plus three minus four minus one. This is going to be zero. Well, that means this is divisible and the remainder will be zero. So, so in this case, why, why do we need to know that? In this case, that means we don't have to do the long division. We can basically factorize it and find the answer, right? Well, obviously we don't know how to factorize with x cubed, okay? So, and long division is long, right? And it's, it's easy to make error. So that's why I'm going to show you another division. We call this a synthetic division, okay? Synthetic division is basically we, again, the uh, the divider must be having a coefficient of one for the x to be able to use this. It will be the same thing for the, uh, to see if it's divisible. So that's perfect, it matches, right? So if we figure that, oh, it's divisible, so we can actually apply this long division. All right, so how do we do this? Okay, again, we use, I use the same example. I know that this, the remainder is going to be 19. Okay, so let me, let me show you how I'm going to do this. So I'll write down the coefficient of each term. So if we are missing the term, we put zero, remember, because this it will be x cubed, x squared, x and constant. Okay, these are the position number, right? It's like a table. I put the two, I put the three, I put the minus four, and then I put minus one. Now, just like the um, x minus two make it equal to zero, x equals to two, I want to put this number in front here so that I want to divide that, right? So this is how I'm going to uh, find out this number. It's exactly the same thing for testing if it's this divisible or not, okay, uh, will be choosing the, uh, the inverse sign, the opposite sign of what we see minus two, then it becomes a positive two, okay? Now, the first position here is always a zero. I need to add two plus zero is going to give me two. And then two times two is going to give me four. And then three plus four is going to give me seven. And then two times seven is going to give me 14. And then I add again, and then it will be 10, right? And then I multiply again, two times 10 is going to give me 20, right? Multiply, give me 20. And I add minus one plus 20 is going to be 19. And this is actually my remainder. And this here is, oops, it's going to be my x square. This is going to be my x. This is going to be my constant. So the answer for this long division is going to be 2x square plus 7x plus 10 remainder 19. And actually, uh, x not equals to 2. This is actually my restriction as well, right? I find the number to divide, but I, that's, that's also my restriction. So this is actually my answer, the final answer for this question. So this cannot be uh, divided, but because there's the, actually the remainder. Now, let's look at the other one that I, 
I know there's no remainder because this is actually the same example. Again, I'm going to make x minus 1 equal to 0, x equal to 1, so I'll have to divide by 1, and that's also my restriction. So let me put everything. So the, I'll write down the position. Okay, so the coefficient will be 2, 3, minus 4, and minus 1. And the first one is 0 here, and here is actually 1. 1 is actually coming from this x equals to 1 here. Now I add 2 plus 0, 2, 1 times 2, 2, 3 plus 2, 5, 1 times 5 is going to give me 5, minus 4 uh, plus 5 is going, is going to give me 1, 1 times 1 is 1, minus 1 plus 1 is 0, and that's my remainder, and that's x squared, x and constant. So my answer is going to be 2x squared, so these are the coefficients, okay, it's very important, these are the coefficients. 2x squared plus 5x plus 1, and there's no remainder, and my restriction is x naught equals to 1. And that's it for this chapter, factorization, and basically including the long division, because I, I feel that it's actually part of uh, factorization. If we don't know how to factorize, we at least need to know how to divide, right? So, uh, again, you need to practice a lot for this chapter to be able to uh, uh, to do really well in this chapter and it's very very important because we'll be using this again in an other chapter uh, well you can use part of this for the next chapter and you can use this a lot in CJAP so very important to know this well all right with the long division as well synthetic division most of the time uh, teacher will not show it in high school um, it's basically a part of uh, pre-calculus in CJAP uh, but not everybody is taking that course right uh, only the people who is not doing well in math in high school that they will take a pre-calculus course and that's basically a uh, part of the uh, course material and I feel that it's not very fair for the student who is not taking pre-calculus and they don't know this. So I'm including this into this uh, chapter uh, in high school. I think that is actually quite useful for the high school student as well. So might as well learn it now. Okay. All right. So that's really optional for the, again, in this chapter, the completing the square is optional, but most teacher will teach. And um, synthetic division is optional and teacher will probably will not teach okay so these are the two things that you uh, might not learn